At-home vagus nerve simulators have become more and more popular over time. They're easy to get online, they're relatively cheap, but should we be using them is the right question to ask. We use them only in specific cases. Should we be using them in cases that are of POTS cases or autonomic cases? The answer is, I don't know. What is more useful to look at is what is the mechanism behind the symptoms that we're experiencing in these cases, and does the vagus nerve offer an on-ramp to be able to stimulate the areas in the brain that we want to stimulate? So one example of that might be someone who has an error in cardiovagal output. We tend to see that in inappropriate sinus tachycardia, cases where someone's resting heart rate is super high, over 100, laying down. So in those cases, these are people that may have trouble being able to generate a signal through the descending vagus nerve to be able to inhibit activity at the heart. These cases make sense to be able to try to find a way to be able to augment that vagus nerve firing so we can get it back online. Other cases to think about when we're Anything where we're trying to increase the sensory signal that comes from the gut, from the lungs, from the heart. Those are kind of the main ways that we would think about it to be able to then augment activity in the brainstem to be able to change outputs. But at the end of the day, using symptoms or using a diagnosis as the main tool for being able to then determine what kind of stimulator you want to use is probably jumping too many steps ahead. What we want to find is like what is the mechanism of what's going on in the nervous system and then determine if the vagus nerve stimulator is the best approach.